I kept hearing in my heart, she has a short leg and she knew it. Like she's had it her whole life, not just a little bit. She's had it her whole life. She's a skeptic. She's been raised a Protestant. She's not born again. And she's never invited him in. Okay. Look, here's the deal. Okay. You didn't tell me. I told you. Mm -hmm. you. I told you about your back. Yeah, that's true. I told you that your leg was short. Yes, that's I told true. you that you had a little twist in the bottom of your spine. Okay, just sit back and pull away. Okay, keep your feet. Just relax. Oh, yeah, that's quite a bit. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah. You I'm see that? Picture this. Look how much shorter that is. Yeah. Well, enough, right? Let's <laughs> see it. Yeah, that's like... That's a lot. I want to see it. You're out by like an inch. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. Yeah. And Jesus is going to grow your leg out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a miracle? No. No. Yes, but, of course, but not in this Not way. like this. <laughs> no. Just relax. I'll hold your feet. Okay. Now watch. Don't I want to see this. You don't want to miss it. All right. So Jesus, I thank you. What's your first name? Julia. Julia. Yeah. God, I thank you that you told me about Julia. You told me about her back. You told me that her leg was short without her telling me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Father, I thank you for your love for Julia. In the name of Jesus, right leg grow, back be healed right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right now. What do you feel? I don't know. It feels kind of the same, but it's weird. It's different. And so we actually scared her, but now that seed is working on her heart, and now oh, yeah. Jesus will work on her heart. She won't be able to get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm uh, really skeptical, but... <laughs> well, I want you to be. See, that's good, because, see, I didn't... I knew that, like, you've never seen this kind of a miracle before. Because you grew up in church, but this is different. Yeah, this is different. Now, I just preached this and shared this upstairs. Yeah. And you were sitting back there like, what if this was true? Right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So watch. Yeah. Okay. It's so, weird. Now look, well, here's, a, here's a great lesson. Watch this. You're skeptical. Mm -hmm. you like, I don't even believe. I don't even know that I believe that miracles are for now. Mm -hmm. And right now, yes. your leg grew out anyway. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's amazing. It is amazing. Okay, yes. now I want you to check your back. I didn't hear this word. It's okay, but when we bend, can you feel anything like a twinge that you used to feel? No, it's not. Really bend. You check and see. No, I don't feel it right now. So it is good. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, all right, let me just break it. Yeah. Okay, so first off, were you raised? What kind of church were you raised? Say it in English. Is it Protestant? Oh, yes. Okay. The difference between what I shared upstairs and what you grew up with was you grew up with religion. But this is different. This is a relationship. So this is where God the Father, yeah. God the Son, yeah. God the Holy Spirit, that's the Trinity that you believe in. So what happens is when we ask Him mm -hmm. to come and make His home inside of us, what we're saying is, Jesus, I believe that you were crucified for me. I believe that you died for my sin. You already believe that. You already, that's what you were raised with. Okay. That Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. Yes. That he died for your sin. Yes. And he rose on the third day. Yes. He rose, that's where Easter is. Mm -hmm. He rose on the third day. Yes. Raised from the grave. And they paid a price for you mm -hmm. to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. The difference is asking him to come and make his home inside of your heart. Have you ever done that? No. Never. Would you like to? I don't know. Okay, let me pray for you. That's okay. okay. It's all right. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that Holy Spirit, your presence would come. You would bless her. To top it off and to have my amazing friend Rob, who's filming right now, have money because he knows that like we need money to give away and I didn't have it with me at the time. And to know that like he's totally, totally on page and want to give money to help me and then all of a sudden we end up blessing this girl and, and just and doing what we do. So what we've done as a ministry and as my family personally, if I take, let's say I take my family out to dinner and I have my wife and I have my, my four kids with me. And so what we'll do is we will tip 100% of our bill. 
every time. If I take, if 10 people are with us, I'm only responsible. I'm convicted, responsible personally to tip for my family. Because I want to tip for my wife, for my daughter, for my daughter, for my daughter, and for my son. And my little one doesn't need much. So what we do is we 100% tip. Not that we're rich, but what we want to do is we want to change the culture in the places that we live by being radically generous so that people can know that God so loved the world He gave. And it doesn't matter whether they treat us bad or whether they treat us good. We've actually had waitresses that have treated us horribly. Then when you tell them about Jesus, they treat you worse than that. Then they go back and they make fun of you in the back with all the other waitresses. They're like, oh, I got one of them cuckoo Christians, one of them psycho Christians. And honestly, across the board, when you check and see, like as far as waitresses and waiters go, they will tell you that, and I, I'm pretty sure if it's the same, like 10% tipping here, then what happens is you will find out from a waitress or a waiter, you ask them, what is it like on Sundays after service lets out? And they will tell you that it's the stingiest people, it's the meanest people, and it's the most complaints that they get. And so the body of Christ shouldn't be known for the stingiest people. We should be known as radically generous. The body of Christ shouldn't be known as the most complaining people because it says let not even complaining be named among you once we get saved we become a saint in the eyes of the father a holy one set apart set apart to do the works of the father that they might glorify the father in heaven because they see our good works so when we do that with a waitress what happens is they see our good works the waitress sees the works that we have done and that seed sticks in their heart so that they can glorify the father when no one's looking so that girl today just praying for her knowing about her back having her see having her here. So Jesus touches her, heals her, and she's not ready to surrender to Jesus. We're not gonna manipulate her because no one comes unless the Father draws them. And so right now she's being drawn, and then you sow on top of that seed. It's like sowing and watering at the same time. And all of a sudden, like her heart just becomes ripe and ready because she's gonna wonder what is going on. She'll pull up dreaded, like people pull up dread, dreadlock preacher, and I come right up on there. <clears throat> and so they'll pull up YouTube videos and watch, and all of a sudden, before long, they surrender to Jesus, man. That's pretty amazing. So we can break the culture with generosity, but also by manifesting Jesus. And that was a perfect example right after the meeting today. It's awesome.